Time to go on an adventure through New York City from the laundromat to Billionaire's Row, an empanada here or there. Come with me. Okay, that might have been like the worst intro ever, but we're going on an adventure. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Joe. Subscribe and follow along. Like, thanks for helping out the video and the content. Really appreciate you joining. Let's go on an adventure. For now, just using the camera, I'm gonna put the uh, phone up on top too. I'm gonna have forward and back view as I walk. Now the elevator. Because I'm broken. Out of the way, we're adventuring. We meet up with a girlfriend. Should be fun. Yeah, we're walking down from 52nd or between 52nd and 51st, all the way to 9th. Here we go. Cool truck. enough steps in so I should go ahead and start the freaking watch and so I did. City, COVID restaurants, plus I believe some Broadway areas, I'm not sure, 100%. I don't know, it looks like it, doesn't it? I have a feeling I'm close to Broadway. This goes back to the point where I need to learn more history about where I'm going before I just go explore. But that's part of the fun. Filmed for immortality on YouTube. <laughs> Have a great one, man. So, contrary to our all popular beliefs, I really think you're in school of happy people. You know, they're just like inundated by all the sound and craziness and the regular stuff of the world, too, plus everything else. Nothing I've seen so far. Obviously, there's, you know, bad things at night, just like there's bad places at night in Colombia. Or anywhere else in the world, but genuinely good freaking people, and I love it. All right, unless I miss the road, the laundromat should be coming up here after this intersection, right after 9,000. Fingers crossed. I haven't been using GPS, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And then just, you know, and then I'll 
also have this for uh you have the four and the back here. So if someone's coming from behind me, I can see you. Someone's coming from the front. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. I, I just went to Columbia. That was a, a little bit rougher in New York. So I, I think I'm okay. I can pull my own. If I can pull my own there at 3 o'clock in the morning by myself, I can do it in, I can do it in New York. So. Where are you from? Ecuador. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Ecuador. Laundromat Cafe. Mart's this incredible lady. You can tell she's a hard worker. She's from Ecuador. She's traveled around. She's wound up in New York, in this beautiful city, in this tiny little spot. And now I'm sitting here as well with my food, leftovers from Abby. Thank you so much, baby. And time to just eat, relax, and enjoy watching people go by. So I'm gonna do a little time lapse. Thanks for watching. So we're back, I got 30 minutes until my laundry is done. I'm already sweaty, looking forward to a shower, and I'm gonna have to wash this stuff again. Though I might just do like I did in Columbia, I'd hand wash this and let it dry. But yeah, I'm in Daria, chill street. Pretty cool, just had to get over the uh, stupid little thing about being watched on the phone. But that's normal. So I'm gonna wait, hopefully not drop my phone anymore, and see you in 30 minutes. And in that time period, I'm gonna contemplate what are the differences between the FX3 and the Sony A7S3. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to get the FX3. But again, in all things in life, I have to contemplate the differences between two things that are pretty much exactly the same, and the only difference is what purpose you plan on using them for. I'll go through the details later. And one of my favorite things is going somewhere, doing something, and then finding a book. Existentialist at the Existentialist Cafe. Freedom being an apricot cocktails. Let me just read the, uh, the cover. <clears throat> what is it to be free? Do we have a fixed nature, or can we, anything, can we be anything we choose? If we are free to shape the world, how do we want that world to be? What is it to live a personally authentic, honest life with ourselves and with others? Can we change how we live? And why do we forget to remain constantly amazed that we are here right now on this earth? These, uh, these questions were asked, let me make sure I'm in focus, because of course I'm focused by ruin this. <laughs> these questions were asked by the existentialists, like an adventurous group of philosophers and novelists whose stories stretched from the dark years of interwar Germany 
the exciting Paris of the late 1940s and 50s and beyond. In confronting the most basic problems of human existence, they challenged the orthodoxies of their time and left their stamp on 1960s youth culture, civil rights, and anti-colonial struggles, feminism, and the LGBT liberation movement, among others. Later, some of these fights seemed close to being won, and existentialism went out of fashion. But now, in the 21st century, we find ourselves again confronting essential questions of identity and freedom, this time in a complex, high-tech world. And perhaps the existentialists have more to say than ever. At the Existentialist Cafe is a very personal account of this daring movement and the thinkers who created it, with their love affairs, mentors, rebellions, lifelong partnerships, and sometimes violent falling outs. It's an epic tale of big ideas played out between passionate, larger-than-life characters in a great, bustling Existentialist Cafe of the mind. I'll show the inside part of it. Very cool. And the back, I think the back side is the same. Alright, it's time to fold my laundry before I get kicked out of here. Definitely adding this to the list. <laughs> This is the thing I love about New York. The kitchen. Photography on a thing. Beautiful! So fun. That fully defines New York. There we go, right? Everything. I think no matter where you go, you get a little taste. The more that you stay, the more taste you get. How much you want to taste it? Alright, we're taking a ride. Onto we'll the road. It's the road. Place I wanted to be. All right, just like in high school, I'm a fast walker. I'm gonna move past people, you know. That's one of them. Pretty sure that's another one. Yeah, going back to the point that I was making with Jack. This juxtaposition thing, this comparison. It's a daily life, all the time. And if you happen to walk into New York City along 57th Street, you'll get the biggest one. Brooklyn Diner recreation over here. For the people on the Rich Street to feel like they're not on the Rich Street. A little walkway. I think this is technically the uh, industrial law, but. They decided to make it nice, because it is Carnegie Hall. You had to be a reason. Carnegie Hall, home too. This, 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 this. There we go. What about the Ukrainian tea room? Sky rights. Just 
such a crazy concept to me is that you literally have to buy the rights to build in the sky. What? Makes sense. Even though I know these scaffolding things are just legal bullshit, it still looks cool sometimes. Because who knows? One day there could be a rock or a pane of glass, and you're dead. At least you know you're protected. Okay, Dolly Market's across the street. That's where I'm going to. Okay, I found it. Good old Dolly Market. AKA a place I've never been to before. Let's see if it's good. All right, so that was not the authentic, you know, Indian Dolly Market like I thought it was gonna be. Maybe owned by Indians, but Whatever, I got some beer. I'm happy. I'm on my way back to the hotel. See you, billionaires, Joe. Oh, billionaires, bro. How dare they? Produce from now, all on property here. And give it out for free. Literally bring all of the poorest people from other parts of the city and bring them up on Billionaires Row. I have some idea that it would affect property values. You know what? Maybe New York's eventually. They need it. Continue to need it. Rental prices up to five thousand dollars a month. Crazy. On Billionaires Row. Oh, we got some high quality stores over here on the right. This piece of clothing is probably more expensive than twelve two weeks of pay for someone working a regular service job, non industry, non union. Very interesting little crack of the street, which is cool. Don't mind it. But where is the cool coming from? Cool structure thing. Madison. So I need two and a half more avenues. That's cool. If only we had a man like Kennedy again. Sorry to YouTube. I'm not just gonna use Kennedy's words or we'll modify them to make them modern. Going to be like Kennedy in so many ways. Vitalize the, uh, the spirit and the fire within of America. Because it's no longer there. Or it's, it's there, but it's just a small little flame. And we need it to be a roaring fire for the world. And we will. Just like every single person so far that I've seen. Pretty happy, pretty smiley. Friendly, in a good mood. Grand, I might just be naive, I might just be seeing a little tiny slice of New York on a Tuesday, but I believe it. And we're back on third avenue. About to be back to the hotel. Like I was saying, I've seen so many happy people. So it all might just come down to perspective. In fact, a lot of people that are here are beaten down by all the sound, the craziness. My hand's holding on for dear life. Got some beer and a sandwich. I know my baby's gonna be hungry. And we're back. I'm gonna leave it there. Gonna go through some other stuff, maybe on audio, maybe some of the film. See you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.